guys, I'm Kate. Welcome back to my channel and I am so excited for today's video. But first, I need to get something. Now I'm ready. So in order to celebrate Valentine's Day, me and my good friend Brooke Passport have decided to do another of our writing and drinking vlogs. Only this time, we're gonna be changing it up quite a bit. And that is because Mm. We are going to be following the Save the Cat beat sheet in order to write two stories. One is going to be a romance story and one's going to be a breakup story. And we're actually going to alternate... I thought I dog-eared this. So each beat, we're going to alternate stories. So I'm gonna do the opening image of my story, which is going to be the romance story. I'm going to title it and start it out, but then from there on out, it's gonna be totally switched off and it's gonna be fun because we're just gonna have to roll with what the other one does. And then Brooke would do the theme stated, I'll do the setup again, she'll do the catalyst, etc. until we get to the final image and we are done. So this is going to kind of be a fun way to work on synopsises, synopsi, synops... The and also just kind of get the creative juices flowing. But of course, on my video on this channel, obviously, on this video, you're only going to see the romance story that we come up with, or at least the synopsis for the romance story, right? If you want to see the breakup story that we come up with, you'll have to go to Brooke's channel, which I do recommend because she's great. So you should do it anyways. <laughs> oh, and I get to pour myself more cheap champagne after every three beats basically. So, let's get started. Actually, I need to come up with the title first. Ah, you know, my favorite thing. <laughs> what I'm really trying to figure out, because we're going to be switching these off, is if I should go super romance or like a cute rom-com romance, or should it be like a drama? Like a Nicholas Sparks romance, even though those make me cry, so I don't usually like those. And it's my story, right? So we're not going to do that. There's no crying in the synopsis game. <laughs> And now I should say while I'm waiting for book that there will be a poem at the end. I will be coming up with a poem and it's going to be a Valentine's that I would theoretically write to someone if I wrote anyone Valentine's. Wow, this sounds so sad, but look at my gummy bears. Maybe I could write them my Valentine's poem. They've treated me really well up until the point that I could see where my eyes were. <laughs> We're having only five minutes to do each beat, right? Oh, yes. Oh, and I almost finished. I think I was thirsty. Oh, my God. It's delicious. I love this. Yay. All right. Woo. <laughs> now that I've confirmed with Brooke that we are good to go, and I've already almost finished my champagne, it is time for my least favorite thing to do, title something. I think it would be funnier if I had a full idea of what I wanted the story to be, and then at the the end we can just kind of compare and see what Brooke and I come up with when she has no idea what I'm going for. God, I hate titles. Title, 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 title. Oh. Okay. Okay, some of my favorite romances are like a series and I think it's fun when you can include the number. So we're gonna do um one. <laughs> Because this is book one, obviously. What if I just started with book seven or something? But it needs to scream romance. Like, I want it full hallmark where, like, love is in the title almost. Like, I want you to know. I want you to know. Okay. Okay, I have decided on a very hot romance. May I introduce you to One Salacious Summer? And this has genius built-in marketing, right? Because it could either go for the numbers, like One Salacious Summer to Turtle Dust. No, um, you know, I could go by numbers or I could go by the different seasons even. Like One Salacious Summer starts out the romance and then the next book could be like one, um, <sighs> I'm trying to pick an F word that goes with fall that's not this, um, whatever. Anyways, that's what I'm going with. So One Salacious Summer is the title of our romance. And then opening image. Because I don't know anything about this, I don't know what this- I don't know anything about Save the Cat. Okay, I need an example. Miss Congeniality opens on Sandra Bullock's character and flashback as a playground 
tough. What? How does that make sense as a sentence? What am I reading? <laughs> At home in the world of men, kind of. Okay. I did request that Brooke give me an example where I had like a horror and she said, the monster slithers down the hall searching for Billy in, or I'm under the bed listening to the monster slither down the hall hunting for me. So I'm thinking I can kind of, it, this can work. Can this work? This can work. Um, well, I only have one gummy bear left. <laughs> I should say now that we only kind of figured this out today, but it's gonna be fun. So if you wanted to see someone struggle with the beat sheet, here's the video for you also. <laughs> As it stands now, my opening image is, after being blindsided by another breakup, Celeste buys a last minute plane ticket to the other side of the world. She spends a single day swearing off both men and women in romance entirely, convinced she was forever meant to be alone. Then, as she's burying her toes in the white hot Australian sand, Celeste first sees Landon. Yeah, Celeste and Landon, they can be our romance. See, I really opened this story up to possibilities because now I'm thinking that this could be an overall story. This is just follows Celeste's romance in a single year. We have the summer, she has her romance with Landon, but in the fall, she has her romance with like Claudia. And then in the winter, she can have her romance with someone else. <laughs> like, you know, I, anyways, this is what I'm thinking. We'll see how this changes as things go. <laughs> But I will be back to you with um, what Brooke's theme stated is. Hooray! We are also theoretically now at 6.10, the time that we were supposed to be done and meet up, so this was perfect timing. Poor Brooke. On the plus side, you know, I'm gonna learn something today. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished Brooke's uh, theme for her story, the breakup story, and now I'm going to read the theme she gave me for uh, One Salacious Summer. Well, she sees his head, like her toes, the rest of Landon's body is buried beneath the sand. Her curiosity peaks, she watches him through her sunglasses. She may only see his face, but he's smiling like a fool and strikes up conversations with people walking by his talking head. Celeste laughs, knowing she'd make a fool of herself if she were in his position, but maybe this guy isn't the type who embarrasses easily. Maybe he doesn't care what people think of him. She hasn't said one word to this guy and already she wishes she could hold his level of confidence. Okay, I think I understand what the theme stated is. <laughs> and I think I gave Brooke an okay one, so well, let's let's do this. Now I gotta figure out what setup means. Is setup not just normal setup? <sighs> okay. So the interesting thing for me here is that while I tried to kind of come up with this setup, and now that I have both the opening image and Brooke's kind of stated theme and how that sort of expanded the story, I feel like the setup stage, which is supposed to be the first like just 10 pages, I feel like I've already done that in the first two things and now this third one seems almost repetitive in a way. I think I came up with something that might work, but it really just feels like I'm trying to do filler time before the catalyst, but maybe we need that for the character. I don't know. It's a very confusing thing. And I did ask Brooke. And even though she has like more experience with it, she was feeling kind of the same way that she has a good setup already. What? do what to do I guess I'm just gonna wait for what catalyst Brooke chooses and we'll see if she's catching my drift it's already turning into something different than I imagined but I'm excited one salacious summer indeed just kidding it turns out that my main character Celeste is not super salacious yet so this is um the title's more what's hopefully to come for her get it together Celeste oh but now since we're moving on to the fourth beat I can uh, get some more champagne but I'm gonna fill it with something different this time right now. What is happening? Do you see this nonsense? <laughs> are you wanting to stay on camera or is this off camera? Uh, no, we're gonna do one more thing on camera, which is that we are gonna shame Brooke. <laughs> we are setting a time limit on you. We have like 15 
14 of these to do. We've done three. <laughs> and like, I think it might have been an hour. 40 minutes? Yeah. Okay, so I really do need to pick up the pace. The setup was hard though. I feel a little bit better because you said that. so much setup to where I'm like, okay, what else can I do for setup? Yes! I finished my catalyst for Brooke and she still hasn't finished even though I gave her a warning. <laughs> So we're just gonna get some more champagne. I mean, why not? Also, I'm watching YouTube videos, so it's not that bad. <laughs> but seriously, Brooke, hurry up. <laughs> so debate, what do you mean? Debate is only pages 12 to 25. Apparently it's the part that used to really baffle him. Oh no. It's the last chance for the hero to say this is crazy and we need him or her to realize that. Should I go, dare I go? Okay debate. We're having to answer a question. We're at the point where Landon is asking her if she wants to play frisbee. So the question is, what's the question? <laughs> Can she be bold enough to take him up on the offer? Will she decide that getting to know him doesn't have to lead to hurt? Were any of those actual questions? Several minutes later. Or maybe the debate is just, is she going to say yes to his offer? Can that be a debate? Is that like, you know, saying yes to the offer of playing Frisbee is like saying yes to the overall offer of companionship? What? This is gonna help. By the way, I'm realizing it's not a good way to learn by just drinking champagne. Although honestly, I don't think I could do this sober very well either. What? This is so hard to set up. Okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> so should we say that we're changing things? Our, I feel like we need to. Maybe yeah. We've been at this for how long? Like three hours now. Right? Yeah. We're not halfway. We're not we halfway. halfway. Yeah. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more to do. Oh my God. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> what beats? Okay, here's the question. Oh, I'll let you drink. <laughs> well, Brooke and I have changed our minds. <laughs> it's honestly, we've created a monster. This is our Frankenstein, as I told Brooke, and it's fully come alive and it has turned into something that neither of us expected nor wanted. I'm gonna finish up my beats as far as I can while she finishes up basically her story. The key thing here is though, now I'm just gonna do one or two sentences per beat. This is a nightmare. <laughs> this is a bad way to learn about the beat sheet. Or potentially, is this save the cat's fault? Is this this guy's fault? Is it? Is it? <laughs> Probably not. Break into two. In a 110 page screenplay, it happens no later than 25. We leave the old world, the thesis statement behind and proceed into a world that is upside down version of that it's antithesis. What? What's the antithesis? What was my... Okay, what was the thesis statement? Is that the theme? Ugh. So the thematic premise as set up by Miss Brooke is maybe he doesn't care what people think of him. She hasn't said one word to this guy and already wishes she could hold his level of confidence. So our Celeste wishes she had the confidence that Landon does. Oh, Brooke wrote me a message. It says, you can do it, Kate. <laughs> this is the antithesis. What? Ah! Where'd it go? Where'd you come from? Where'd you go? Where'd you come from? Cut my job. You know what? That actually doesn't help me at all. With newfound confidence from her conversation with Landon. Perfect. Nailed it. Great. Okay, we're on to the B story. Maybe Celeste slowly gets to know one of the girls at her hostel. Okay, 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 okay. One salacious summer, a tryst with Landon, but then one something fall is her traveling with this hostel girl and they go to another hostel and she's the main love story the entire time, but we don't see that until like the very end. Oh my goodness. Brooke says she's going full on soap opera. I cannot wait to read hers. <laughs> no time to lose. We're moving down to two sentences for real this time. B story, the blossoming friendship with the hostile girl. 
<gasps> in the bunk above her or below her. Whatever. This was Brooke. She had no idea until now that I am plotting a series. <laughs> Although having said all that, I'm realizing that some of the B story needs to be like potentially in a romance, not the romance usually. At least that's the stories that I've written and read. There is a B story that's not about any kind of romance. So I think I'm doing this wrong. This is not the first part I'm getting wrong at all of this. <laughs> so no time to start picking at things now. Fun and games apparently is the promise of the premise. I feel like in a romance, it's gotta be the cute kind of things, right? We're not as concerned with the forward progress of the story. Oh, just kidding. What about this premise, this poster, this movie idea is cool. Lots of pretty ocean shots, lots of cute, Things happen with the very hot Landon. Hooray. The sentences start to make less and less sense and I really got kind of confused in this midpoint bad guys close in all is lost dark night of the soul sort of area and that I think a lot of them are going to happen all at once when really I think that there should be like multiple bad things that kind of knock Celeste down. If you had asked me initially if I thought this story would include her staying in jail overnight I don't think I would have said yes. <laughs> that probably wouldn't have happened but here we are. None of it makes sense. A lot of it is bolded or with like some question marks because I really just did not know where I was going with it. But like most of these tipsy writing vlogs, it's fine. <laughs> it's really fun to watch Brooke type. <laughs> and now there's more champagne. Well, I've written two really terrible poems in the span of like two minutes. The first one goes, do you even exist or are you as made up as my story? And then I just put yikes, just in all caps. That's a big yikes. And then I have roses are red, violets are blue. You're really cool, I want to do you. So it's really, we're going from a lot of extremes here. <laughs> Hallmark should hire me for their cards. <laughs> and now I'm gonna try it kind of for real. I'm gonna give myself a whole five minutes to do this. <laughs> which is more than I needed for the other two and obviously they are masterpieces. So let's go ahead and do, you know what, let's do four minutes. We don't want to get crazy with that. Four minutes, 14 seconds. Start! With a whole eight seconds to spare. I finished it! Wow! Oh, okay. God, my freaking things having as much trouble as I am. Okay. Him. It's the 14th of February. February? That's always a weird word, but it sounds especially weird right now. It's the 14th of February on a warm Texas day. I want you to know how much I care, but I don't know how to say it. The words linger on my tongue, waiting for their turn. Your name first, then a breath. I don't know how to unlearn this fear. What if my feelings aren't reciprocated? What if you're not there? What if I've rushed things and I think I care too much? But I love you. I love you. I love you. The end! That's, you know what? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that that's better than my roses or red violets or blue poem, but truthfully, that would really cut to like, the point. <laughs> also, you know, I had enough in me to sort of experiment with like, um, some fun little, what am I even trying to say here? I don't know, it looks different, right? <laughs> But all right, I think that's it. Brooke finished, I am now finished. The only thing left to do is ask you guys to please comment down below. I would love to see you write a poem to your Valentine. Um, what is your preferred drink of choice? And honestly, what do you think of the Save the Cat method? I feel like I've just gone back and forth on this. I have done a little bit of research in the past. I'm gonna say I didn't give it the time it needed. I didn't give it a fair shake. I think I just immediately haven't quite been feeling it. And I think sometimes if I don't click with something immediately, I don't always give it the best go. So this is something I know. I'm gonna give it a better chance when I'm not tipsy off of champagne. <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know what you think. I know this has gone around like crazy on AuthorTube. I know Brooke really does like it and I would just love to see what y'all can come up with in a very short amount of time using this. So if you want to give your abbreviated version of Save the Cat that almost fell off the bed, 
an abbreviated version of Save the Cat following that beat sheet. I would love to see it. And finally, just thank you guys so much for watching. I will also leave Brooke's link down below to her video and her channel. I definitely recommend you check her out. I have gotten the pleasure of watching her write most of her story. <laughs> I cannot wait for her video. So this is gonna be fun for you and me. And I feel like I should finish this champagne before this video is up because at this point, like there's nothing left in this bottle. I did it. Obviously, I think you can tell, I can tell. Editing me is gonna have so much fun. Thanks y'all, bye. Hey guys, what? <laughs> oh, did you already record it? Yeah. Ooh, but now I, since we're moving on to the fourth 